Hey guys, wanted to uh, share another quick little project that I'm doing with you here. Um, I decided on my 2005 Outback to uh, replace my little cigarette lighter socket with um, some USB uh, plugs or outlets instead. Um, so I wanted to kind of walk you through how I plan on adding a power port to my center console um, because I've had uh, one of these little USB sockets a uh, couple different variants um, for quite some time but I've only ever been able to use um, one of the ports and that was the port that I had hooked up to a data connection going to the back of my stereo so um, I'm gonna show you my solution so I went ahead and I bought a uh, little voltage drop down here um, 12 volts is the standard for these little cigarette lighter power ports um, and USB the USB standard is 5 volts so initially I had attempted to hardwire a uh, USB um, plug into uh, the positive and negative on my original um, harness and found that that didn't work. It was kind of a trial and error. So instead I went out and I picked this up for really cheap on Amazon. Um, I thought it was a pretty solid find. It's a female end. so. I've got a little adapter male to male here and then the other part of that will fit into uh, like a pass through like this and so my solution was to mount one of these pass throughs into the center of my little center console cubby and I actually found that it slid right into a a uh, little socket from a 2008 Outback so it's got the little lid unfortunately it is mislabeled as 12 volts on here because even the 2008s and 2009s came with uh, a 12 volt like cigarette style power port instead of the USB so this was just my solution that I came up with um, I'm trying to figure out how to get some power to uh, the center console. Um, so my plan, what I'm planning on doing is I've got little solder seals here. These things are great. You can find them online, sell them on Amazon. Um, and you just take one of these little solder seals cut off the connectors to the old uh, to the old socket plug which I already deep in this one this is they're just kind of standard spade connectors um, and they fit they fit onto these spade uh, male connectors on these older plugs so what I'm gonna do is... I'm just going to snip a little bit off snip these little connectors off of here um, if you are unsure on what your polarity is it's always a great idea to double check with a multimeter this is a pretty cheap multimeter from an auto parts store um, 
but basically you, in order to identify your positive versus your negative, um, just make sure that you know, you're reading the correct voltage, set it to the, to the voltage setting, it's DC with vehicles, um, and just make sure you don't have a negative reading, otherwise your uh, polarity is swapped. So, now, of course on this side it's self-explanatory, red's positive, black is negative. Um, so I'm going to strip away a little bit of wire here. Excuse me, a little bit of insulation. Probably going to do a little bit more. Should be a pretty decent length there. And before you before you make any sort of connection, make sure you have your actually I like to double layer, so I'm gonna th thread through a little uh, piece of heat shrink. And then I'm going to thread through this solder seal. And I'm just going to twist these wires together. I'm going to try and go about halfway between. I'm going to choose like the halfway point on both ends of the exposed wire. I'm going to twist these together. have to redo this actually the uh, exposed part of the, the very tip of the exposed part of the uh, little drop down has already has a maybe a, a little solder cap on it I'm just going to make sure that these wires are nice and tightly connected. And they're already, the, the yellow wire was already a little bit longer than the uh, black wire. Um, just the configuration from factory here, but if you want to be extra careful, extra cautious, just cut them to different lengths. Um, I'm going to have three different layers on this thing, so I'm not really concerned too much about wires ever making contact with each other, but uh, the next step here would be to add some heat. There's a little bead of solder right in the middle of here, so I like to do this with a lighter. Um, I do have a heat gun. It does work, but I've just gotten used to doing this with a lighter. I didn't always own a heat gun, so to me this is just as simple. Just as easy. And I'm going to heat evenly until that solder bead melts in the middle. I think I actually am going to transition to the heat gun. And let that cool off for a second. Give it a little, little 
tug, make sure it's not going to come apart. Let this rubber material kind of cool down a little bit. And then I'm just going to slip over this heat shrink. I'm going to do this heating process one more time. off a little bit I've got a pretty good connection there so I'm gonna do the same thing with the yellow wire and the red wire here these are both positives I've already confirmed that I'm just gonna snip the little end of the, the little cap that they put on here and then I think I'm going to strip just a little bit more of the insulation away. So when you're stripping wire, you just want to make sure that you're not cutting through this multi-strand uh, wire and losing a lot of your potential surface area. Um, another one here do a little bit more that should be plenty so I'm gonna do the same thing on this one twist those wires together I just went the opposite way of the first time that I twisted them on accident. So I'm gonna twist those nice and tight. Feed this through to about right there. I'm gonna actually feed this. Probably should have done this one first, but feed the heat shrink down past it. Give myself some room. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm just going to try to find the middle point of these two wires. Wrap one end. And then come back and wrap the other end. Makes a really nice, solid, mechanical joint here. So they, they shouldn't come apart. Even even just doing that much, um, they're on there pretty tight. And then just get this solder seal right in the middle of both of them. I like to make sure that there's there's two little red uh, like seals on the end of these. And when you heat them up, they really stick.
Okay, Give that another couple seconds to cool off. I've noticed with the larger solder seals, uh, the little solder bead in there doesn't tend to wick into the uh, multi-strand wire quite as well. Um, but it's no, it's enough of a connection that I haven't ever had any issues with it. I've used this on many projects on my vehicle. Uh, never had a connection issue. And I've never had one of these fail either. I think I've been using these for six or seven years. Never had any issue with them. Try to get a good. down a little bit again inspect my ends of my heat shrink I might actually heat up this end a little bit more probably not gonna get a perfect perfect seal on this end uh, because the insulation is a little bit thicker on the step down power converter but I'm pretty comfortable with that it's not moving anywhere so yeah, that's how I that's how I tend to do my solder joints and then like I said, this is gonna this is gonna run to the pass through. I've already I already tested this in the car, so I know it's gonna work. But um, I'm gonna charge my phone on one of these, and then the other one is gonna run to a second data cable that goes to the back of my doubled in stereo. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd just walk you guys through through my solution with that. All right.